We're analyzing meta, stock ticker META. We're using the select six analysis. The more metrics it checks out on, the more likely it is to be a great business. Then we're calculating the intrinsic value of meta and comparing it to the current market price to see if it's on sale. And we'll answer, is meta one of the best stocks to buy at the current price? Was meta really an easy double like Monish Pabrai said it was just a year ago? Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand meta's stock performance. Meta currently trades for $214.04 per share. In the last year, their stock is down 1%. Even though it was cut by more than half in October of 2022, the stock has rebounded pretty dramatically since then. In the last five years, Meta is compounding at 5% annually. In the last 10 years, even with their declines, Meta is still compounding at nearly 24% annually. Going back 11 years to when Meta IPO'd, the company's stock price is compounding at 20% annually. Meta trades for $11 under its 52-week high. The company has more than doubled from their 52-week low. Only 1% of their shares are sold short, and Meta is one of the largest businesses in the world. They have a $554 billion market cap. Learning more, Meta is the world's largest online social network with 3.7 billion family of apps monthly active users. Users engage with each other in a variety of ways exchanging messages and sharing news, events, photos, and videos. The firm's ecosystem consists mainly of the Facebook app, Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp, and many features surrounding these products. Users can access Facebook on mobile devices and desktops. Advertising revenue represents more than 90% of the firm's total revenue, with more than 45% of that coming from the United States and Canada and over 20% from Europe. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. There are two key reasons for this. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. These business returns will be captured here by return on capital. By looking for a benchmark that's about double an average business, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business. While Meta Platforms has seen their returns on capital decline in the past five years, the company has earned above average returns on capital in all five of these years. In their most recent fiscal year, they earned 22% returns on capital. Averaged out, Meta's earning about a 27% return on capital in a given year. These returns are nearly four times better than those of a typical business. This is a very strong check on metric number one for Meta. Metric number two, we're taking a high level look at the growth of their business. We want to see revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth in the last five years. This metric is all or nothing. All three of these have to be up for this to be a check. In the last five years, Meta has more than doubled their revenues. Their net incomes are only up marginally. They're up 5%. Even with some of the media around the business in the past couple of years, Meta has still grown their free cash flows by 24%. All three of these are up, meaning Meta is growing across the board here. This is another Another check on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. This takes the perspective of an individual shareholder in Meta. As we learned in our previous metric, Meta has grown their net income by 5% over this time. And in these last five years, Meta has bought back about 7.5% of their shares outstanding. This is important because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. When a company buys back their shares by decreasing the number that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which will ultimately increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. It's almost as if Meta was making a partial acquisition of itself over this time. To understand if this is value accretive for long-term shareholders, you'd need to research what price these buybacks were occurring at, and you'd have to understand an intrinsic value for Meta. Thankfully, later on in the video, we're performing a discounted cash flow analysis to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Meta. So stick around for that. Their net incomes are up and they bought back some shares. This is strong earnings per share growth for Meta. This is another check on metric number three. We're perfect so far. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years for Meta. Similar story to their earnings. Their free cash flows have grown 24% in the last five years and with their share buybacks, this is strong free cash flow per share growth for Meta. Another check here on metric number four means we're perfect on our first four metrics for Meta. 
There's still one vital piece missing. You might think nailing high returns on capital and having strong growth is the key, but we haven't touched on the one thing that I believe sets truly wonderful businesses apart, which is having these characteristics without using a lot of debt. Metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow Meta has produced in their last five years. Meta had negative net debt in all five of these years, meaning after paying off their debt, they're actually left over with a cash cushion, while their cash cushion has significant significantly decreased in recent years. With Meta reducing this by $37 billion, the company still has nearly $13.5 billion in cash left over as a cushion on their balance sheet. In all five of these years, Meta was strongly cash flow generative. Their free cash flows have grown over this time. Additionally, with over $13 billion in cash left over and $118 billion in free cash flow in the last five years, this is a very strong check on metric number five for Meta. We're still flawless through our first five metrics. Let's see if Meta has has what it takes to be a select six stock. Metric number six, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will provide a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It may offer a reasonable starting point for a fair value of Meta. Using their enterprise value takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives us a perspective of Meta that's more similar to as if the company were a private business. Currently, Meta has a $541 billion total enterprise value. In the last five years, Meta produced $118 billion in free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, Meta produces $23.6 billion of free cash flow. When we divide their average free cash flow by their enterprise value, that gives us a 4.3% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Meta. Worth being aware, in their most recent fiscal year, Meta produced $19 billion of free cash flow. When we divide that by their $541 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a 3.5% current free cash flow to enterprise price value yield. These metrics are split on either side of the yield of the 10-year treasury. They're both coming in below that 5% risk premium we'd be looking for, meaning that this is our first and only X of the day on metric number six for Meta. Just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're throwing this business out. This is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze Meta platforms, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a fair intrinsic value for Meta. A discounted cash flow model is based off a business's predictability. Meta has been a somewhat predictable business in its past. A DCF model is like any model in any discipline. Its outputs will be sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of Meta's free cash flows. Then we're using historical growth assumptions to project these into the future. It's up to you to do your own homework to understand if these are accurate and applicable going forward for Meta. If we assume they grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 12% annually for the next 10 years, then in the 10 years from there that this growth rate is cut in half and Meta grows at 6% annually, adding in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their tangible net worth. If we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, at today's valuations of Meta, it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for the business is around $172 per share. So based off these assumptions, that doesn't look like there's a margin of safety in the business. There are some factors to keep in mind here. Meta has been a somewhat predictable business in its past. That's not a guarantee for the future of the business. You need to do your own due diligence to understand these assumptions. Please be mindful, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. In just a minute, we'll talk about our final rating for Meta, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business. Starting with the key qualitative aspects supporting a potential long thesis for Meta, number one, the application of AI technology to Meta's various offerings along with the launch of VR products will likely increase user engagement, driving further growth in advertising revenue. Number two, Meta's ad revenue per user is growing, demonstrating the value that advertisers see in working with the firm. Number three, with more users and usage time than any other social network, Meta provides the largest audience and the most valuable data for social network online advertising. Then then for the qualitative points supporting a potential short thesis of Meta, number one, regulations could emerge that limit the application and collection of user and usage data or restrict acquisitions affecting data utilization and growth. Number two, despite rapid user growth, many of Meta's customers may also belong to other social networks such as Snapchat or TikTok. The firm will continually have to fight to capture a user's time and engagement with its properties. Number three, Meta is currently a one-trick pony and could be severely affected if online advertising no 
no longer grows or if more advertising dollars shift to others like Google, Apple, or Amazon. There you have it for a balanced perspective of the qualitative aspects of Meta. Now it's time for our final rating of the business. In analyzing Meta platforms, ticker symbol META Meta, we learned the business earns significantly above average returns on capital of nearly 27% annually. In the last five years, the company has doubled their revenues and their free cash flows and their net incomes are up as well. Meta's bought back 7.5% of their shares. While they've reduced their cash cushion, they still have $13 billion in cash left over after paying off all their debt. The company has generated $118 billion in free cash flow in the last five years alone. On both a current and an average basis of their free cash flow to their enterprise value, it looked like that yield was below the risk premium we'd be seeking. Performing a discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, from today's valuations of Meta, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value is $172 per share. The company very recently traded at that mark in February of 2023. You'd want to be patient if you're waiting for that price point. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not a buy or sell recommendation. It's not financial advice. Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial or investment advisor. With all of the factors of our analysis in mind today, it looks like Meta is a very strong candidate for further research. The company looked very strong based on the numbers. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock and analysis videos, comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Meta with me and have a great day.